Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Pomodoro Technique and how it can be used to help you in your studies. Here's a question for you. What do you get when you cross a stopwatch with a tomato? The answer is a Pomodoro Timer. See, this is a serious educational video. I'm not trying to make a joke. If you want jokes at the start of your physics videos, then you'll need to go to that other teacher. Anyway, let's start with some history. To understand the Pomodoro Technique, we need to travel back in time to the late 1980s. I had some great times in the late 1980s, but that's for another video. Italian university student Francesco Cirillo invented the Pomodoro technique in 1987 in an attempt to improve his focus and productivity when studying. He used a kitchen timer shaped like a tomato and set himself the task of focusing for just two minutes. When this worked, he experimented with longer time intervals and found that 25 minutes of work followed by five minutes break worked best. He struggled to get much done when using shorter time intervals and found that he lost focus when working longer than 25 minutes at a time. Now, unless you're fluent in Italian, you're probably wondering where the Pomodoro technique gets its name from. Well, that's simple. Pomodoro is the Italian word for tomato. That's right, I'm about to teach you the tomato technique. If you want to find out more about the science behind the Pomodoro Technique, then it's easy to find online and there are plenty of scientific papers outlining its benefits, including one with the title, Can a Tomato Increase Your Productivity? Spoiler alert, it seems like it can. The key principles to the Pomodoro Technique are that it limits the time the brain has to focus. It avoids the tendency to procrastinate. Committing to only 25 minutes of work at a time seems far less intimidating than the thought of studying all day. It reduces the distraction caused by multitasking, since during one time interval, or Pomodoro, you should be concentrating on one thing only. And it encourages you to work towards completing tasks. Question is, how do you do it? So there are whole books written on the subject, but here are the basics of how you can use the Pomodoro technique when studying. First off, pick a task. That could be working in homework, revising for an upcoming exam, writing an essay, the choice is yours. Next up, set a timer for 25 minutes. That's the typical length of time that people choose when using the Pomodoro technique. Start working on your task and keep focused on it until the end of the timer. Once that's done, take a five minute break. That's one Pomodoro completed. Reset your timer and get going again on your chosen task. When you complete four Pomodoros, you should take a longer break from 15 minutes to 30 minutes this time. The important thing is that your 25 minutes of work is completed without distraction. So turn off notifications on your mobile phone and create a focused environment. If you want to try out the Pomodoro technique when revising for your exams, first work out how many Pomodoros you want to fit into your day. Plan out when you're going to take longer breaks for your lunch and so on, and make sure you've got time at the end of the day to switch off so that you're ready to go next time. So, do you have to invest in a tomato-shaped kitchen timer to get started with the Pomodoro technique? Not at all, although they are pretty inexpensive and it look good on your desk when you're hard at work. As long as you don't mind the ticking sound. You can see that I've bought one just to try it out for this video, but my favourite timer is this one which I bought from Minimal Desk Setups, which has two timers so you can set one for 25 minutes for when you're hard at work and the other for your rest period. You'll also be glad to know that there are a whole range of Pomodoro apps available for mobile phones and tablets, as well as websites, many of them free. Well, that's it for me. I'm off to write my next video script, and it's a long one. So it'll probably take at least five Pomodoros. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in the next one. Goodbye.